Back in 1999, I had barely made it out of high school. I almost didn't make it. I almost got held back a year or dropped out, but I barely made it. I tried to go to college and I failed out because I was just partying. I was partying all the time, man. I was an addict. I had issues. So I failed out of college and then I'm in this relationship that's like not going so great and everything. And I get this job at a coffee shop and I'm working there and I'm still partying. I'm popping pills, smoking weed regularly getting drunk regularly and I'm just trying to make it through and trying to make some cash to support my habits and I'm living with my parents and it seems like a dead end and then I run into this lady that I work with who's my supervisor her name is Liz Johnson and she had this light about her this vibrancy about her this passion this life this goodness about her she was so good with customers she worked harder than anybody else she treated her fellow employees so well. Customers loved her. She made great coffee drinks and great food for them. She showed such, such hospitality. She was so vibrant. She was so honest and truthful, yet so loving. And I was drawn to that. So I started to open up my life to her a little bit as she would ask me questions. And I would tell her about the crazy things I was doing. And then she started to share who Jesus was with me. She was the first person that ever did it. Nobody had ever shared Christ with me. They had never shared the gospel with me up until I was 18. I had never heard it. And I was compelled by it. I'm like, well, wow, if this is doing this in Liz's life, I wonder what it could do for me. And then she invited me to church even, and I showed up, and she was probably really surprised that I did. I had the long hair and a ponytail all hung over and just like rolled in there. Then I ended up making the first Christian friend I ever had because she invited me, because she shared the gospel with me, because she took a chance on me. What did Liz do? Well, she lived out Romans 15, 9 and Psalm 18, 49. It says, therefore, I will give thanks to you God among the nations, the Gentiles, Lord. I will sing praises about your name. That's what she did. She praised God amongst somebody like me, who in a sense was a Gentile, because I was outside of the people of God at the time. And my life has never been the same since because she took that chance, okay? She stepped out of side of her religious comfort. She obeyed God by faith. She ended up doing that with a lot of people. I didn't even realize this. Liz didn't know 23 years later that I'd be you know, married for 18 years with three daughters that I would have a master's degree and not be a dropout anymore. I'm not saying that's all the point. She didn't know that I'd be a pastor now. She just believed that God could do something in the life of this hipped out, tripped out, stoned kid that she was working with, okay? Liz just passed away. She died at the age of 47 of cancer. She had a battle with cancer for a lot of her life. She left behind three daughters and a husband. She impacted many lives. I watched her funeral and I bawled my eyes out. And I remembered, God, you put this woman in my life to share this with me. It's such a vital time. Friends, it's hard to be a witness for Jesus in 2023 in our culture. It is. It's hard because there's a lot of resistance. But nonetheless, we can invite any and everyone into a relationship with Jesus. And like Liz, we can believe in people when it seems like they have no hope. It seems like they're the farthest from God. It seems like there's no shot for them. God wants to give them a shot and he wants to use you. He wants to use us to do it.